So the next alternate history will be essential power victory in World War I, but the scenario is pretty dependent on how the final peace treaty goes down. So to understand what the central powers would do to the Entente, let's talk about what the Entente would do to the central powers. Starting with the easiest, Bulgaria lost its coastline with the Mediterranean to Greece. And really nothing else. They got pretty lucky. Next we have the Ottoman Empire, which is kind of weird. The British promised the Arabs of the Ottoman Empire that they would get a unified Arab state from the Ottomans if they helped the Entente. But the British, being the British, completely ignored that promise and did something completely different. A guy named Sykes and a guy named Picot had an agreement called the sykes picot Agreement, dividing the Middle East between France and the UK. Everything below the agreement line was given to the Arabs. North of the agreement was going to be broken apart, we'll get back to that later, and everything within the agreement would become a League of Nations mandate. League of Nations mandates are basically, we have liberated you from the empires of the central powers, but you are not ready to take care of yourself, so we, the League of Nations, will protect you but we're too busy for that, so we'll let a different country take that job. For all intents and purposes, the mandates are a part of whatever empire they are given to. North of the agreement line was going to be a bunch of zones of influence, territorial expansions by the Entente, and even new countries. But a revolution happened, and the Ottomans became Turkey. And the Entente was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And let Turkey be Turkey. Next we have the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was completely obliterated. Austria and Hungary were broken apart, and both had large amount of territories taken away. Hungary gave Transylvania to Armenia, and the Slovakian and South Slavic territories got independence. And Austria gave Trieste and South Tyrol to Italy, and the Czechs, Poles, and more South Slavic regions got independence. The Czechs and the Slovakians united into Czechoslovakia, and the South Slavic regions, along with Serbia and Montenegro, united into the Kingdom of Croat, Slovenes, and Serbs, eventually becoming Yugoslavia. And now we have Germany, and oh boy is this a fun one. The Entente's demands to Germany during their surrender is crazy. Nearly everything was included in the Treaty of Versailles, so let's just go over that. Part 1 of the treaty created the League of Nations, which is basically the United Nations but not good at doing anything. The point was that if the League of Nations had standards, then the world would have standards. Which worked really well. Part 2 and 3 decided Germany's new boundaries, with Part 2 establishing the borders, and Part 3 establishing stuff like new citizenships and property and changing territories and whatever. Belgium got the territory of Mosnet. Germany had to abandon fortifications and remove troops in lands west of and around the Rhine. A region called Saarland would be administrated by the League of Nations until it was decided if it would be German or French. But in the meantime, France would get all the profit from the Saarland coal mines. Alsace Lorraine was given back to France, since this region was ping-ponged back and forth between the two countries. Poland, A, exists, and B, has a lot of Germany's eastern stuff. A newly independent Lithuania gets the territory of Memel, the free city of Danzig becomes an independent city administrated by the League of Nations, and Denmark gets the north part of Schleswig. Part 4 says that anything German outside of Germany is no longer German which includes colonies, property, imports, exports, and many other things. Part 5 puts heavy restrictions on the German military, restricting the amount of troops Germany could have, how they're organized, what they can do, where they can go, what type of equipment is built, how much of that equipment can be built, banning the creation of certain ships, restricting the navy and air force, and much more. It was a lot, and it sucked. Part 6 was about the release and or burial of soldiers. Part 7 says that the former Kaiser of Germany will be tried for a supreme offense against international morality and the sanctity of treaties, which basically meant that he started World War I, which he didn't, so should be punished for it. Part 8 says that only Germany caused World War I, which wasn't true, and so should be the only one to pay reparations. Only Germany. No one else. Okay. Then the rest of the treaty is just about the specifics on everything, which isn't all that interesting so I won't talk about it. So that's what happened to the Central Powers. Either they completely collapsed, were accused of everything, or were Bulgaria. So what would the Central Powers do if the tables were turned? Well, that's a story for another video.